Fighter Pilots and welcome back to another X-Wing flight video brought to you by Out of Art Gaming. As always, my name is Phil and today we have round two of the Battle of Scarif Beachhead 2022 tournament recently held at the BIC in Bournemouth and hosted by Entoyment. It was an absolutely cracking tournament and I'm really looking forward to going through this game and joining me for it we do have... We have Fergus. I wasn't at this tournament but I sure wish I was so I'm going to commentate because I'm there in spirit. You were there in spirit, and obviously you were watching it all on Instagram unfold. I was, um, and I probably, I think I messaged you a couple of times, but how's it going? How's it going? Who's winning? How's it going? Yeah, you were you were bugging me through it, and that was fine. That was fine. Um, but yeah, it was a great tournament. Shame you couldn't be there, Fergus. Um, but as I said, you're there in spirit, and we get to commentate round two with the new obstacles. They look really good on the table. What pack are they from? I didn't know the new obstacle pack that came out. Oh, was it Pride of Mandalore? Pride of Mandalore, yeah. Yeah, I, I have the pack, but I, I did half with my brother, so he probably kept the cool bits, and I just got the rebel bits. I've got the Fang Fires, they're cool enough. I mean, they are pretty cool, but I mean, I do love the fact that there's new obstacles in there. But anyway, we're not here to talk about obstacles, although Tobias Baker has just moved one. Let's actually talk about the list. Now, I believe you were going to go through Dan's list for us, Fergus. Yeah, I'll take I'll take on Dan's list. So we have an IG eighty eight C with Fearless, Advanced Sensors, Connor and Rig Cargo Shoot. We also have Constable Zuvio in the Space Tug or the Quad Jumper, um, if you're a one point player, um, with Pass Analyzer, protect, Protective Gleb. That's a hard word to say, but he's the he's the coordinate guy. Uh, proxy Mines, Cloak, Cloaking Device, and finally we have Tao Chavera in the Jumpmaster with Cutthroat, Advanced Proton Torpedoes, Ion, Cannon, and Zam Vessel. So yeah, that's a very interesting list. I mean, we've seen some interesting lists on the channel before, but this is like something new, in my opinion. Like we have an IG with our IG crew. What is this? I mean, we have like the Cloaking Device. I, I don't think I've ever seen the Cloaking Device used. The only time I've, I ever see yeah. Cloak is... I've on, seen whisper, it one yeah, on, on yeah, TIE Phantom or I've seen it used rarely on the Scimitar I've see the first tournament I went to actually someone won with a, with a cloaking device Fair the whole enough. point was it was a space tug who just cloaked and just put three people onto rocks it was quite funny I mean that's that's kind of what you expect with a space mm. tug but this is but, like there's 20 points worth of upgrades on this space tug and I want to see a, if they're worth it, and also B, is is it effective? I mean, like I thought, space tugs were cheap because you know they yeah. can blow up in one turn. Yeah. I mean, we'll we will find out because on the other side of the table we do have two space tugs. Uh, but firstly, Ned is flying Guri in the Star Viper with elusive pattern analyzer, stealth device, and Virago. Mm -hmm. We've got Captain Jostero, as is, nothing else on him. Uncar Plot with Pat Analyzer and Tobias Beckett, and another Captain Constable Zuvio, not Captain, still a Constable. He's still with, a Constable. Uh, with Composure, Pat Analyzer, and Proximity Mines. So. Interesting use of Composure. I mean, granted, we all go up to 200 points, so throw it on one point. But out of all the one point upgrades, Composure is the one I would take only on certain pilots. I mean, I like Composure. It's it's a good upgrade. I mean, when it comes to talents, I don't, we had this discussion on we Discord did. earlier today. <laughs> we did, actually. Um, I, I do. There's a lot of one-point talent upgrades that I really like. I'm a big fan, and I've said it a few times, Deadeye Shot and Marksmanship. But I have also been looking at Composure recently and thinking that there are situations where it is actually going to be quite handy I quite oh. like composure on Fen because Fen's always boosting a barrel rolling into his linked focus so it just means he always has a focus yeah it's just you know I know you can just do the focus anyway but it's just in just in case of emergencies you can always have that like reassurance focus yeah again one point talent upgrades I, I love them I think they're generally pretty good and pretty handy why is um, heroic so now two points the saddest thing ever yeah, that is went a, from one point to two points on everything. It's so sad. It, it is a weird one because heroic. It's a bit of a meme talent, I think. 
the fact that you just, you just shout at the start of each turn. You, you, you just shout it, and I think even if your even if your opponent actually does well using heroic, both players cheer because they're like, "Oh my god, it actually did something." Mm. But, I mean, when you when you push up into two points, it sounds dumb with the addition of an extra point. But that's when you start competing with cards like Predator and like Elusive, which are both solid cards. Yeah, I mean, Predator and Elusive are really good. Um, so it is an interesting one. But we're not here to talk about anything resistance today. It is all scum right now because that's what we have on the table. A good old scum matchup. We haven't seen it for ages. We've got three space tugs on the board which is hilarious in itself i mean i think we saw we record. saw it we've seen space tugs in the past actually i think it was with yeah. han han and um han and fen i think it was and then you also yeah. bought a space tug for just for the fun of it actually no one was painted one wasn't yours was the painted one uh that was ben flying the he borrowed my space tug so that he could fly too mm. i mean why so- wouldn't you want to fly too I mean, we talked about a cloaking device earlier, so I mean, let's give it a read because who's seen who's seen cloaking device? Um, so it is uh, action: spend a charge to perform the cloak action, and at the start of the planning phase, roll one attack dice, and on an I result, decloak or discard your cloak token, which is so interesting. It, it got, sort of goes to show that being an illicit, it's a broken cloaking device so it's not the yeah. most it's not the most reliable i mean it's not it's not a tie phantom cloaking device no that thing um, is incredible uh, cloak and evade Woo! We're, we're not even going to go into it we all know how much of the tie phantom so we will we'll just leave it at that but it, it's an interesting thing to have there that cloaking device but i think Couple that with the space t- the space tug tractor array, and it d- it does work quite well because you can still do that that tractor ability even whilst cloaked. So you're there. That cloaking device is essentially there, I think, to try and keep you alive as long as possible by giving you the extra two evade dice. So you can then use those shenanigans to move your opponent into horrible positions or move your, or potentially move your own ships into slightly better positions. Mm. So it'll just be interesting to see how effective it is. I think I think it will appear quite a few times, but I think the worry thing is is if you cloak early and then you you roll bad in the planning phase and you just you burn through your charges. Yeah. So it is it's again, there's a lot of things like that where You've got to be aware of the potential risks when you're using something that you might have it for a specific situation and either that situation doesn't arise or something something stops it from happening in general. So, mm. But over the space of five games at a tournament, you'd almost expect it to actually trigger at least once, maybe twice. So hopefully, but... That's an aggressive move from Guri there. I mean, Guri, Guri thrives at range one. I, Guri has is similar to F- um, Fen, in my opinion. If Guri's caught at range two, Guri's not happy. Yeah. Because it can't evade, which... Oh, no, can it? Well, it, can, it can evade, but no, it, it can't. It, it can evade. It's, it's got three evade dice. But it, it has can't, three evade it dice. can't take the evade action. Yeah. Um, but I know what you mean. Guri is does love range one because when at range one is if you've got at least one enemy there you get that focus so you calculate and have a focus you just have all the mods yeah yeah but that oh. barrel, i love that barrel it's Do the, the linked just in case oh yeah again the tokens yeah See? getting ooh, tokens ooh, ooh. it's a sort of weird bit of limbo yeah get yeah. the tokens just get that stress token there so I mean, I love that barrel roll, and on on the Star Viper, it's got a good enough dial that it can actually get away with doing red actions like that. I mean, the, the Star Viper has every basic maneuver, doesn't it? Uh, it doesn't have the three hard. Ah, uh, it's very clear, yeah. Or the five forward. So it's very close. It has a very nice dial, a very nice. Dial. That's a really strong attack there. Mm. Um, 
no damage going through those, so that was very lucky for Gurry. Um, but it, I tell you what, I'm loving the fact we've got Tel Traver on the board as well. Tell tell the funny one. I think he's he's done quite well in previous tournaments that I've watched. I think he's won a couple of Gold Squadron ones, but mm. and that was with similar builds actually with Cutthroat. Uh, Ion Cannon and not Zam, but Zam's incredible whenever Zam is there. Uh, Zam think... is just tricky. I think Zam is better as a pilot, yeah. pilot than mm. an upgrade card because although the overlay says that Dan has two charges with Zam, that's just because the overlay automatically starts with two charges and I didn't spot that at the time. Uh, so Zam currently has no charges. You can just see Zam's card with the chart with the like next to the dial. active charges right next to where it actually says Zam, which is kind of handy and almost mm. like I planned it. Um, but yeah, I think Zam is tricky. Um, not because of how wordy the cards are, but it's just making sure you've got the right one down at the right time. Mm. Like, I mean, I'm an idiot and I kept get, I kept having the wrong card at the wrong time. So that's where I was struggling. Yeah, struggle. I think there's a learning curve of Zam. Oh, is, is, is that a landing on a rock? That's Has Tails just, just landed on a rock? Yep, Tails oh, just clipped that rock. Tails, no Tails not shooting. That's a shame. Yeah. I think Tails is an interesting person because with Cutthroat, it means he can keep regenerating his charge as just as long as his friends die first. Um, yeah. I mean, the answer to Zam is just don't look at Zam. It's, that's yeah. just the simple... Oh, because then Zam can't do anything. Yeah, but, but I mean, eventually you're going to have to. Yeah. Because... And that's he's he's the second highest cost ship in his list, so you sort of have to eventually look, make him a priority. But it, it's looking like very much like Ned has decided to try and get rid of the IG and yeah. Zuvio first, which I think is the right option. Yeah, I think it's a smart option. But we've seen that Constable Zuvio is making good use of Protector of Gleb by yeah. coordinating, passing the stress from the coordinate onto the IG and then the IG doing a blue maneuver and removing it so then the yeah. IG gets three actions well because double calculate and then maybe an evade because you know three of it three evade dice with an evade is well, always really it's, powerful it's just yeah really strong and then you have two evade two calculates and just like yeah not hit move yeah and oh, it's just this it's fearless as well like, this could be working out quite good but oh we have a reverse, reverse. Word you don't hear often in X Wing yeah. is reverse. Not many ships have it, and it's interesting. But that's that's a pattern analyzer reverse there. But let's see what Guri Ooh. is going to manage to. Is it's does be... that fit or is that a bump? That's not a bump. But it's what Guri can do next is what scares me with, with her, her action. Well, Guri's going to have to boost. Oh, but you just do if you can do a boost left. You have a ship at range one, and then you can then punt Zuvio if you need to. I mean, Zuvio will have evade, yeah. extra evade dash from the cloak, but still. But I feel like Zuvio is actually a linchpin in this list because if the yeah, IG doesn't I'm... get the coordinates, I the IG isn't punching as hard as it could be. Yeah, I mean, having Gleb is is huge there, mm. and that is exactly Gleb is just what... so good. Just, yeah. uh, Gleb's ability just just can be ignored and you have the red coordinate. Red coordinate scum is really good, but then the, the ability to just pass on the stress you get from the coordinate is really good because then you can just have them remove it so it's as if it's a white coordinate. Yeah, and especially with the IG having the better dial as well mm. to remove them. I mean, Zuvio, the Space Tug style isn't terrible, but you've got to go faster for those blues. And you kind of want him to go a bit slower and stick behind. If he starts going too fast, oh, that's not too bad. Three hits there. Ooh. And that's three hits going through. So cloaking device, not particularly no, effective um, there. It's two hits going through because you've got one evade. Oh, yeah, yeah, sorry. I, saw, right. the three I saw the three blanks, but yeah. still, it's three that's, blanks that's, from four Oh, green green I mean, dice do, are like that. Green dice do yeah, that though. Green dice can bite back unless you have an evade token. Yeah. Um, oh. Fearless oh. and then spend a calculate. That's 
Oh, I'll spend both oh, calculators. I'll spend both calculators. He's choosing violence there. Oh, I mean, you've got the evade. You don't need to worry about yeah. defending. Uh, and so as we see, space tugs don't like to defend sometimes, but... Yeah, so that's two like damage going through on plot. Unkai can defend sometimes. Yeah. But that was Unkar's a... Unkar in, Plus has a really weird ability, because it's like... If I get a tractor and you get a tractor if we're, if we're bumping. Yeah. Which could be... Could, could, hit, be, could hit the bad list. Be, yeah, I mean, granted, IG's a medium base, so it's gonna you're gonna have to really commit. Yeah. With the but uh, it means you can line the balls up with the pinpoint tractor actually. True. Hmm. So yeah, it'd be two tractor tokens if it's in bullseye. Yeah. So it'd be highly unlikely if you're bumping that you're not gonna clip bullseye unless they bump you. Um but yeah, I mean, it's, it's an interesting one. And like I said, it's just nice to see the space tugs because, again, we don't see them all that often. And that is one shield down there on Tell. Triggering Zam. So Zam now does have a charge. Yeah, this is an interesting thing. We're not, we haven't, we're not seeing a hull upgrade on, to, on Tell, which I think is interesting. Again, I think it comes down to points. All those points spent on Zuvio and IG. And obviously Zam is a lot of points as well. So having to... But, I mean, you have the advanced proton torpedoes. So I was like, do you switch that for the hollow grade? Do you go vi- do you go violence or do you go like defense defense for when you come back to life? Yeah, because that way you come back to life with two hull instead two of hull one. Instead, yeah. And which... you've got the ion cannon, which could be quite deadly. Mm. I think if... The more ships you ionize, that's when the I, uh, IGC can have a field day. I mean, what's IGC's ability? It's the boost into an evade. Okay, that's an interesting one. IGC is the one you see the least, actually. You normally see B, A, and D, because D can turn anything into a K turn. Yeah, and um, B is the one that allows you to double tap. Yeah, with the cannon. Which, yeah, so a BD combo is normally quite good. Um, it's, the, it's the one I would normally go with. But I suppose have, like that boost into an evade is actually still really handy. I mean, um, with, with this, I, the way Dan's playing IG, he's very he's going very aggressive with it, and have and having the evade is really helpful because it means he can survive longer. Yeah. Oh, there's the double Ooh, tractor. There's the double tractor. That is not nice. And looking at it, if he positions Justero right. Does it? I'm leaning up to try and see if I can see if it's clipping, but I just realised I won't be able to see over the ship to see it. It's not like I'm there in real life. Oh, um, the camera miss, there. Yeah, misses the obstacle. That's, now the interesting thing is Dan can decide to gain a stress and then rotate 90 degrees if he wants to, which I think was a really nice change to tractor. It made it means you can't being... be tracked off the board. I think is yeah. so you can't be force forcibly tracked off the board. Yeah, which I think just, is a nice inclusion. It just makes Tractor... Oh, he's doing it. Like said, oh. yeah. It's what... I mean, I'm not going to lie. I actually came up against a triple nan text list in the bad old days just after they said that you could rotate after a Tractor. And he tracted one of my ships. And I went, you know what? I am actually going to rotate. And it was the best thing I did because it then gave me a range one shot back at him. And completely deleted a Nantex oh. doing that. I, I need to get my Nantex. I haven't played them in ages. I only have two of them, but you know, two is two can be a good good fun if they're just very anti separatist. You know, they're not they're not calculating. That's a that's a weird thing to see. I mean, I've only got one, and that was just because it was a Christmas present. And they are I, completionist they are, collection. They are cool, but they're not doing well at the moment yeah. since having been pointed up to oblivion. Oh, does that Thanks, fit TTS. There? Oh, hang on a minute. Oh, could this be... Uh, ooh. Ooh, I mean, nice. if, that, if that fits, that's pretty good. That's good medium, part of it. Medium-based ships. They're so it's, lopsided. Yeah, especially... You said good piloting, especially after being tractored. Rotating. Like, this this, this, this is, is a more ideal position than he was when he was at... Like, he, he wouldn't have been able to clear that move, so he'd have just been straight tracted like, on the bump from... Oh, Ooh, he's in the boost. I, 
I wonder what if it, it would have been like if he dropped the rig target shoe onto Guri. Just give Guri yeah. a stress because limit Guri's actions would be quite. I mean, Guri's not having a fun time. But yeah, they're making use of difference. making use of the ability to get the evade and get out two arcs is also very good. Yeah, I mean that was pretty smart there, and I'm, I'm not going to lie, very impressive that he was still able to fit that after that rotor. I mean, it looked like he was about to bump into plot there, and then committing to that boost round was ballsy. I'm not going to lie, very ballsy. Gets him out of arc of everything, still waiting for. Ned Zuvio 2 move to see what happens there. Ooh, is that going to be getting in the way of... Oh, Guri's oh. getting attracted. Oh, <laughs> oh, because there's oh. a barrel on. It has to be with... The... Oh, Hacked wow. It. And you definitely push it back, so he's going over it twice. Oh, that's oh. just... That's just nasty. That is, that is, that is good. Um, you can track very... me, but I can track to you. <laughs> to you. Oh, no damage. Oh, no damage. Shame. Uh, it's it's going to be interesting. Does he rotate? It all, again, comes down to what move Ned's got dialed in as to whether he thinks he's going to need to rotate. It depends. Oh, no, well, not in this instance because he hasn't done it, but it depends. I'm guessing he's going for Zuvio. If he gets Zuvio off the table, then, then the glab has gone. And then yeah. it's an easier win. Yeah, you, you get rid of that tractor disadvantage. You get rid of that coordinate. And it, it definitely de goes more in your favour there. Mm. I mean, not not saying that taking out the IG is going to be easy because it's still three a agility, lot of three have agility. Evade, yeah. can evade most turns. I mean, but, tell don't sleep on tell. Tell can ionise you, and when once you're ionised, yeah, these it space is, tugs will not be lasting long once uh, once ionised. <laughs> it's with like five health sounds like a lot, but when you've only got two evade dice. Five health can. Oh yes, yes, Guri. That is. So that's why you don't. That's See, why you don't. Rotate. The interesting thing is, if you drop the rig cargo shoot, Guri, Guri would have been forced have been to do. do a, that. Guri would have been forced to do a two forward, and then Guri would be in a very sticky situation next turn. And that... that damage. That looks like, was that an eye or damage? Come on, people, use a dice tray. That looked that look like an eye there. Oh, no, stealth device has been flipped. No, it was damage, damage. stealth device gone. Um, also, not sure why there's a target lock there. Uh, From Guri. I think... Uh, pattern analyzer, probably, actually. Yes. But... Went over an obstacle, so shouldn't have that target lock. I don't know because I think the target. I think the target lock was done a couple of rounds ago, actually. From no, um, um, he went to put the target lock down, but it got taken away because he did the linked barrel roll focus or yeah. calculate. Um, but that's a lot of damage going through there onto Zuvio. Did In he fact, spend the target lock? That's a dead he, Zuvio. He did spend the target lock, so that's actually a complete misplay there. Because he should have skipped his action step going over the obstacle. So he should not have got that tiger lock. So in theory, Zuvio should still be there. But neither player caught it. So that's fine. It, it It's what happens sometimes in the game. So I mean, we could have missed when the tiger lock was played. So if anyone actually noticed it in the comments, yeah. dump it in there. It might be helpful for us But in the I'll future. What, there are a lot of tokens littering around Guri now. That cloaking device definitely needs to disappear though but it does look really nice all there I mean that cloak does yeah that cloak doesn't exist on Guri as cool as it would be to have a Star Viper cloak don't make fair to just just imagine a Star Viper decloaking doing like a one hard and then it's barrel roll the positioning it could get into I, I, I think no ship can with three agility can have a cloaking device or can cloak in general uh well, you can't. I don't think you can even put an illicit on the Star Viper, so that rules that out anyway. Bank Rider doesn't can't take one. Um, M1, M, no, M, M2, the M, the M3, the M3. one away. We'll, we'll, we'll work our way up the numbers to get there. 
Um, so there's no restriction on cloaking device from what I can see with regards to ship, the actual agility or anything. It's more down to whether it has an illicit slot or not, which the Star Viper and the Fang Fighter just don't have illicit, which is probably a good thing because imagine sticking like contraband cybernetics or false transponders on a Fang Fighter. They're already rude enough as it is. You don't need to add to that. Ooh. Or dead man switch. Hey, Connor seeing, seeing some bomb bon play. I do like it. Connor Net now for three points. It's actually quite a good steal. It, Connor Net is really good, especially if you can drop it directly onto something. Just ionize something. Just yeah. say goodbye I mean, to that dial. <laughs> I managed to drop it directly onto a Scum Falcon once and basically oh. went, right, well, you're heading towards the edge of the board now. I want to get um, the Scum Falcon. It, like, I haven't got the Falcon yet for Scum. I've, it's on the to, to get list, the completionist list if you dubbed it in the past. Mm -hmm. It is a cool ship. I do like it, especially with the... The model is nice. Yeah. yeah. I... Like all, all, th all three Falcons like have something different about them, even if it well, in fact, all of them do have different antennas on them. They so you've do. Got the, you've got the rectenna, as they call got, it, for the resistance. You've got, you've got the a flat one. Round. Yeah, you've got the flat dish for um, Lando's Falcon, and then obviously the regular OG Falcon. But cool ships. But yeah, we've got a lot of bombs dropping down there now. Hmm. I I mean, each even in the game, each Falcon has a different job. One's, one wants stress, one wants to be by rocks, and one breaks the game. Yep. But I, th I think it's one of the things I don't think you actually see enough Falcons in the game. I like, it's it's a it's actually just a really good ship and I think it's gonna be better in the future when new rules are made because the bow tie arc will be better when scenarios are impl implemented as well as road. I mean road's implemented now. Yeah. I mean but granted, just, road only is well, it's for the I fours in this instance, but it's I I, I, I like road. don't mind road. I, I quite like it. I just, it's just, bids were a thing that bugged me because you just, it's like, oh, okay, well, my Poe's going to die against your Vader because Vader has a 17 point bid. Woohoo. Yeah. And it also means that we can be more experimental with lists we build. Like, when would you see like an, a triple Imperial Ace with like shield devices instead of just putting those points into bid? Like, yeah. I think it's just, it freshens the game up a little bit, which I think is nice. I mean, it was interesting to see the difference in the lists for this tournament because we had road and no bids, etc. Um, I mean, if we're talking, previous, comparing, yeah, the, the double Eta 2 with the massive bids, the two, yeah. the Anakin Obi Wan, I mean, oh wow, that is IG flying well. That is great there from IG. But yeah, I mean, we look at the last tournament that we got footage for and yeah we had the, the dual anakins at the top mm. there um on top table great list but huge bid i think it was almost like a 20 plus point bid which was crazy it was something manic yeah and also uh, the list that won had a 10 point bid yeah but in this the list the, just the variation of lists there wasn't much ace play throughout the throughout this there was a lot of swarm mini swarm should mm. i say there wasn't any proper swarms but it was a lot of mini swarms um we saw a lot of bulk was the keywords of the day for it um i mean we look at round one that went up on monday and you had four republic y wings so it just, just goes to show as much health as physically possible yeah yeah and it, it was in, it was nice to see that actually because there were ships that you'd you wouldn't necessarily see as much of. Ooh, and that's oh, Zam triggers. Yeah, and that looks to be the target lock one, yeah. I believe. I think it was the target lock one though. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, small nudge. Yeah, small nudge. Um, so. Ned has initiative this round. He's finally stolen it back from Dan, who's stolen it all, all games so far. So his I-4s do get to go first, which could be quite quite handy. 
Uh, so two hits going through. Green dice are just horrible sometimes. They really will betray you. Yeah, they they do stab you in the back sometimes. That's why you do everything in your power to avoid rolling them. Yeah. In the case of some ships, you just don't have green dice. Mm. Can't fail them then. Just be a ghost. Uh, so that's two dice. Ooh, oh, that's a good hit into just Stero. And they're going through. But is that an ion cannon, though? That's the question. Yeah, if it's out the front yeah. with three dice, it will be. But yeah, again, it is. But ionizing just down to hopefully a rock next turn would be actually quite, will be deadly. Yeah, that will be. Because if, if just arrow doesn't shoot, that's one three dice gun down. And also, if he could take a bit of damage, that would be quite nice. And also means if IG has to go over the mine, he can and not get shot by just arrow. Yeah. I mean, one thing I just want to say, it's really nice to see a Kirax on the board as well. I really like the Kirax, and I don't think we see enough of them. I mean, the last tournament, I saw five of them, so... Oh, yeah, yeah. actually, I, I completely retract that. There were a lot of people running five. Okay, it's five nice of, to see... Five of Predators. It, just seeing nice... one named one, that's quite nice. It's nice to see a Kirax on the board, not a swarm of them. Um, unfortunately, I wasn't able to attend the last tournament, Uh Covid struck my household, which was very disappointing because I was very excited. Um, to I don't want to see play enjoy. droids and struggle. I'm I just want to with my droids. Actually, I think I'll have you. Know. Know. I just want to see you just struggle with like, all the ships in your head. Okay, where does that one go? Does that one go first? Oh no, the initiative one. What a shame. There's more than four ships on the board. What do I do? Yeah, <laughs> yeah I don't tend to run more than four. So, but I, I I did enjoy my droid list whilst I was playing it. I did play it a couple of times. I think I sent uh, it to later. you, did I? Yeah, I, mean, I did steal it off you. Yeah, you did. I think well, it more it wasn't a steal. It was more of like a hmm, try yeah. this. This could be a laugh. Yeah, I mean because I I'm still quite new interceptors. I did ask for your help or your opinion. Went this is what I've got. Help me. Um, but it was a good I, fun list actually. I tried my. I just did. You got all the you got all the droids. So let's have some fun. Yeah. So, it better got to fly them as well. Yeah, Ooh. that's the fun bit. Looks like Jostera is going to get a shot into Tell. Looks like two hits. Ooh. So that's one going through. Just whittling them down now, slowly but surely. I mean, they are big ships with a lot of health, but mm. the more guns you have, the better chance you have at whittling them down. Even though they are two dice, you can still whittle them down. Which I think is where um, currently Ned has the advantage that mm. he has got four ships to either get in Dan's way and or just shoot at him. If he can, if he can get them all focus firing down on one ship, they will go down surprisingly easy. I mean, no one gets in the way better than Uncar Plot. I mean, that's, I mean, that's what he's designed to do. It was. Now that was his whole plot. <laughs> but yeah, it's going to be interesting. Will Jostero hit that obstacle in front of him, or mm. will he just avoid it? It, it's oh, really... I would love it if he could because it would be just such a good eye on play just use of eye on otherwise but I mean next turn he will Ooh. Uh, yeah, oh yeah hang I mean... on a minute with, it, with the initiative difference I mean you might be able to go and have Unkar sort of be a bit of a barricade so just uh, bumps into Unkar that would be amazing that would be very very clever or if and can they track to I think Unk has I ability mean, could... to be any ship really not enemy yeah tractor a ship in your forward or bullseye arc so in theory he could oh he has blocked it that is actually that's, that's clever well played well and played and also Unk, Unk's ability will trigger because it's um, 
any ship, so he can track to himself and just arrow to get a better to get a barrel into target. Yeah, but it also looking like he'll be able to avoid that obstacle next turn as well. So just extremely does that again. Waiting for the hand to move. Ah, that's the second new obstacle that Tell has. Cool, he likes his new obstacles. Oh, oh, if he takes a damage, then just oh, arrow no. my trigger. It's a blank, so oh. no, just arrow trigger there. But yeah, Tell really likes those new obstacles. He wanted to check them out a little bit closer than he should have. I do love the new obstacles. They do look like um, the moon of um, Conquer Dawn from yeah. Rebels, which is nice. That was a good episode. I mean, from Pride of Mandalore. Makes sense. makes sense, yeah. yeah. But I just thought they were really cool. Again, Pride of Mandalore, really good pack. Um, if you haven't had a chance to get it yet or don't know what's in there, we'll have a link up in the top right for our unboxing video of that. Uh, so you can see exactly what you're going to get in there. But it's very, very good pack. I know, I have one. <laughs> Ooh, this could be interesting. So, interesting way of doing that there. Um, for those of you that are a little bit confused as to what happened there, so Zuvio dropped that proximity mine last round and did a two sloop. Um, so, without trying to obviously position the template or move tell out of the way because he was doing a two bank he knew that he was going to be in the exact same position just facing the other way just put that one template back down on the mine and then just moving forward i do like those human like template clever workarounds yeah it, it's very situational it's one of those ones yeah, it was that, very situational but it's still i mean if you think about it, it's quite cool you probably only see or need it one in a hundred or maybe even like 500 games, but I'm not going to lie, when I was going back and editing this, ready to do the commentary with you, I just kept going, what happened there? But I didn't go back to check it, and now I've seen it again in action. I was like, ah, Smart. that's what was happening. Really clever. I like it. I'm, it's one of those ones I've de definitely like saved to my little tool bank, just in case it ever comes up that I want to fly directly back at one of my mines. I mean, the one I learned recently was the five three forward one, where you can do um, a three forward boost and use a five template. No, it's more as if you're gonna, if you might overlap something, a five. I don't know how best to describe it, but a base, then the three forward, and then another base is the same. Yeah. So if you just keep the template the, the ship touching the template and just slide it to the other end then you've done a three forward yeah. it's hard to explain it's not, I've probably, I'm probably sound like a, num, like a Muppet but if it appears I'll be like that's my thing no, he I did the thing if, if, you've, if you've got it if you've got it lined up at the back of it with the five yeah and then you line up to the very front at the other end that is essentially a three forward that is a three forward yeah, yeah no it, it makes it makes sense mathematically um, but we've got a lot of shots coming in here. Oh, that's a nice range one shot there from IG into... Ooh. Into that's two space damage time. into Plut there. Ooh. Need, needed all of that to stay alive, so yeah. very, very fortunate there. And that is... That's very disappointing for Dan. He was, I think, he was hoping to delete at least Just one get, ship. Just get one ship off the table without having to waste tell like range one shot on Guri with an ion cannon. Well, uh, tell can't shoot. He's on an obstacle. Oh uh, yeah. So he wanted to maximise his shooting as best as possible. And uh, that's two hits coming back. That's one. He spent so long admiring the new obstacle. If he just forgot the towels on it. Yeah. Oh, that was an additional dice there. Oh no, that was so that was a direct hit there on IG. Ooh. 
and suddenly he's down to three health and it's it's definitely running in Ned's favour right now. But those dice aren't so much. Hey, there's some of those that he was looking for. What can Plut do right now? Quite a lot, in fact. That is two more damage through onto 88C. That is, that's a not very healthy droid right now, and I don't know how long he has left to live. I'm pretty sure that he can get chased down quite quickly there by, by Ned. But what do we reckon Plutt's actually going to do, though? Because right now he's got an obstacle in front of him. Do we reckon he'll just do the two reverse? Oh, that's an interesting one, actually. He could. I mean, it means he's stressed again, but he's got pass analyzers, so that's not really a problem. I, I think it would actually be a, a, a clever move on his part, because, yeah, he'll be stressed. He's got tail, pass analyzer, though. But then tail would just be... I mean, tail probably bump into him, so, I mean, that's pretty good. And then you can just uncar plot. I think, I don't know if his Uncoupled Ability is a must, because I think he should have done it this turn, but... The wording of it is a bit confusing, because I don't know if he should have done it when Jostera bumped into him. Yeah. If so, that one agility, the one that one damage that should have gone into Uncar from IG should have happened with the tractor. But I could be reading that completely wrong. Yeah, just to um, clarify that, obviously there was some dice being rolled. Uh, Zuvio, the sneaky little monkey that he is, had just dropped a Proxmine onto Tell, uh, damaging Tell, and triggering Jostero for a nice range one four dice attack. Oh, it finally we, happened. And from that, we have a wounded and a blinded pilot, and now two health between two medium, uh, two ships on Dan's side. That sounds like a hurt pilot. <laughs> very hurting, very good. And again, we see that two that two reverse there. Oh, does he? Oh, just Arrow. Oh, just Arrow. He's taking a damage. You are taking a damage and getting and multiple ions. ions. Now going back um, to the Uncar situation, his ability reads at the start of the engagement phase, if there are if there are one or more other ships at range zero you and each other ship at range zero gain a tractor token. Now, should that have triggered last round? Now, I'm not sure. It's because if it's a must or a may, um, it says neither. <laughs> and I don't play, I don't see or play Ankar enough to know how he works. If there are one or more other ships at range zero, you and each other ship at range zero gain one tractor token. So I would assume it's a must because it mm. doesn't say may. And it's one of those ones, I know that they've got the you may, you must ruling in there. But if it doesn't say may, and it says that something should happen, I would read it and say, well, it's things should happen. Way. Yeah. Yeah. And that's a shame, because then Ankar and Jostera should have taken a tractor last turn. But, yep. I mean, how often do we see three space tugs? Yeah. Oh. Ooh. Ooh, poor poor Jostera. <laughs> landing right on Jostera. Oh, not only is he... He's ironed, ironed and stressed. And he's on a rigged cargo shoot. This is just a bad day for Joss. Oh, bad day indeed. You just don't, you don't like, well, I think Dad loves to see it, but Ned definitely doesn't like to see it. But what can... What can Tell do right now? Doesn't look like an awful lot, to be honest. I mean, he's got a good shot on Unka. Yeah. I mean, if you were Dan, who would you be trying to focus down on right now? Oh, get Unka off the table. Just at least you can 
hold that. Yeah. I feel like things are quite sticky at the moment for Dan. And I, it looks kind of obvious, but I think Ned is going to be trying to get IG off the board because that mm. is, I think that is the right option. Get IG off the board because that way, if Tell goes down and then oh, comes back. That pilot and, is short wounded. Yeah. Yeah, if, if Tell goes down, comes back, then IG goes down, he can then come back again because of cutthroat. So, ooh, that's a great rig cargo shoot catching Zuvio as well there. Now, I think at the moment they're discussing if, if the bomb hits them or not. But the looks of it, it looks to be he's all right. I would, like, from that angle, I would say he didn't. Looks like they rolled for it, so. Yeah. I mean, but I think kinda... it shouldn't have hit him anyway because the way the templates line up, he's he was one away, he did a one hard to the right, so it shouldn't have lined. It shouldn't have hit. Yeah, it shouldn't have hit. And it's only if the template or the actual base lands on it. And I don't think it would. No. Ooh. Now, try and barrel roll behind Tell and see if you can take them both off the board this turn. You won't be able to remove Tell because of his ability. Well, I mean, you remove him and he goes into reserves. Mm. But it, it's still getting him I mean, off the board. The thing is, you can't, I don't know how the timing would work, but if you kill Tell first, he spent his charge. He's not removed until the end of the round. If IG died, will he instantly get his charge back? Because <laughs> cutthroat. Uh, it all depends on when he goes down. If Guri took him down then Tell would come off the board in the I-5 step. So once the I-5 step's over, Tell would come off. Mm. So if he goes down in the I-4 step... He has no initiative ties. The only way he would... Yeah. No, he has no initiative ties. So yeah, you he, he can't yeah. do the double whammy. Yeah, it, it, would, it wouldn't work. It, it would have... You'd have to basically have both ships go down in the same initiative step for it to actually work. That hurt my head a little bit. I had to really think about how that would work. Because again, I very rarely see Tell on the board as it is. And it's just one of those like, it's only because of Cutthroat that that even really matters. Cutthroat is one of those interesting new cards that has a Awkward effect they don't see often. But it's a really good effect when it does trigger. Yeah. It is really... I do like it. I think the faction-specific ones are those. There are some really nice ones. I mean, Heroic is obviously really good. Um, Disciplined is an interesting one. And Dedicated is also interesting. But, oh, there we go. There is Uncar Pluck gone. Almost a shame there wasn't a Dead Man switch on there because that would have been hilarious if it took out Tell. And oh, it would that's... it would also trigger just Dara's ability, just you know, for the extra <laughs> the extra yeah. attack if necessary. Oh really trying really trying to get IG down there. So it looks like range one. That's not bad at all. And that's night night for IG. Oh, poor IG. Yeah. I, to me, the shit's still the wrong way around, but. Every time we see, you're going to mention that. Yeah. Every time. It's a cool ship, but I don't know. It's, for me, it's, it's just the wrong way around. Like it looks like it should go the other way around. 
and then you get like a if it goes the other way around it should also have like a weird tentacle ability like the squid because it like grabs those, people. they look like grabby arms mm. <laughs> it looks like it should be grabbing you but like, like the um the grabbing game at the fair when you're trying to win a teddy it's like i want this ship <laughs> i'm gonna get this ship i'm gonna yeah i'm gonna grab it i don't know how that would work in game so Maybe that's why Lucasfilm designed it that way. They thought, though, there's a game called X-Wing in the future, and it's not going to work properly if it's good, if it's not the right way around. 100%. That's exactly what they were thinking. Uh, honestly. Future thinking. Smart people. Well, that is the Ion move there for Justero. Uh, getting the stress for the rig cargo shoot, which will go at the end of this if there are if they can actually get the template out. Um, but this is it's a very tough prospect for Tell. I know he technically has two health because he gets to reset in a minute. Ideally, what he, he'd love to try and get those APTs off because that would be the absolute ideal, but. It's so with tricky. a blinded pilot, that'd be quite difficult. Oh yeah, there is that as well. Because he'd spent his lock, well his lock was on plot earlier from Zam. But yeah, it's. Uh, I think unfortunately he's in a really sticky situation, especially with Guri there. I wouldn't be surprised if Guri was doing some form of sloop to get round. I mean, Guri's stressed at the moment, so Guri has to get rid of that stress. Oh, yeah. I didn't even see that. Surprising was how large that token is. You'd have, you'd have thought I'd have seen it. Yeah. Um, one thing I'm curious about. So it's almost a given that Tell is probably going to go down very shortly. If Tell doesn't and kills everyone else, Dan's a genius. We just don't know it. Yeah. But where do you then... Where on Dan's side do you bring Tell back in? There's not long left on the time, so you kind of want him close enough to be able to do something, but it's a really tricky situation. Like, do you just try and joust mm. with him, or I think do you the, try, and get, yeah. try and get around the side as quickly as possible? In a tournament setting, you just go, with the limited time left, you just go, okay, what's the quickest way to get points? So it probably... It's either retreating or it's seeing hmm, can I try and run in and try and get Zuvia off the table get Jostera off the table yeah get those because getting getting in, Guri yeah. off the table seems to be impossible yeah it's going to be very very tricky although that is was that that was three damage onto Zuvia or two damage onto Zuvio, sorry. That was not a bad shot at all. Uh, Zuvio getting the return shot. Oh. All right, and Tell. That's one Tell. death for Tell. Tell comes back to life. So, bye-bye, Tell. Hello, Tell. So back with one health, all of all of Tell's charge is back. Blinded Pilot isn't on there. I just haven't turned it off. Um, but yeah, going for the quick option, four and a half minutes left. You kind of just got to race in and hope, haven't you? Mm. Do as much damage as possible. Unfortunately, with Guri being the one at the front, yeah, at the front leading the charge. Guri also doesn't have that stress. There we go. Um, leading that charge is going to be tricky. If he does go first, that means less of a chance to set up blocks, so he can go more head on. Yeah, but that barrel roll is where it's gonna come down. I mean if it if it was me and I was flying Gurry, I'd probably be putting in a two forward. Which would be very bad right now, so it's a good job it's not me flying it. Uh, I don't know what I would do if I was playing Gurry actually. I'll probably risk a three sleuth and just be like, this would be fun. 
yeah, the sloop could be interesting or, as well, actually. I mean, it depends. The, the turret's in the left. But so the, would it be worth doing a one forward and a barrel roll? And just the way I look at it, if you, if you do the three sloop, use pattern analyzer, take a calculate, get your fo- or target lock, get your focus for having range one, double modded shot. I mean, with pattern analyzer, you can do linked actions as well. You just get double stressed. Yeah, I mean, I don't, and because this is probably last round. Yeah, I, I don't, I don't see the point in taking the double stress. If you just take that calculate, like, will you be able to? You'd have range one anyway. Just go full bore. And let's see. Yeah, that looks like a three sweep on the dial. So yeah, does he do the? Just See, missing I, that obstacle. I would do a barrel or link to calculate just to make sure you're not in his arc. What, Could behind you... him? Yeah. Can you still be range one and just to make sure he doesn't shoot you? Okay. Well, looks like he's gone for the calculate. Oh. And cap. Yeah, Guri does damage and Guri like, kills. Like, yeah. Uh, well done. Oh, Gary's. Oh, can we do a double tap though? Oh, we oh, do. We're, have, we're, get, we're getting the shot on. Could do, we can do get have some cheeky damage. Shot back. Let's see what happens. That's why you uh, do the barrel roll. Uh, dice cam, no. Triple evades, doesn't matter. Oh. So. Gary just is like, yeah, you're not shooting me. Yeah. Guri, the, only, the only damage that Gary got was from a rock. Yeah, Guri damaged herself on a rock. So man, that Guri build is defensive. Yeah, it's a very good Guri build. I mean, it's, I quite like Ned's list. It's an interesting one. There's a lot of shenanigans in there, but also you don't need to rely on the shenanigans as much. Mm, Whereas you, think... you still have a good knife fighter in Guri, and then you also have Justara, who's just an X-wing, pretty much. Yeah, and I think that Dan's list relied a little bit too heavily on the shenanigans but again cool shenanigans if you can get the trigger yeah when the shenanigans worked with the zuvio passing it on to ig and then ig getting all the actions you could see that ig was quite a threatening thing to defeat Mm. but i think once ned realized hang on a minute if zuvio goes the whole list falls yeah it it was very much stacking it all on one card there which is it's tricky and on a ship like the space tug they're not exactly they're not designed difficult. to live yeah yeah they, they are they're cheap and kind of expendable so you don't want to rely on them but again well played there ned like very well flown like i mean you had gurry i love watching gurry being flown but star viper in general was lovely um, yeah i love star viper i have two of them <laughs> yeah and the ig did really well as well it's just a bit unfortunate that he lost his support in Zuvio but well played to both players so thank you very much guys and Fergus thank you very much for joining us no worries thanks for having my interesting input (laughs) (laughs) anytime mate Um, but guys that was round two of the Beachhead 2022 still got three more rounds coming so do stick around for that make sure you like the video subscribe to the channel And if you do like what we do, you can support us on Patreon with the link in the description below. But anyway, guys, we will see you next time.